presentations first, you guys. So I'm gonna set the Zoom people up. Maybe um, we wanna do like a, whoever's talking come right here since yeah. everybody's sort of like sitting right there. Okay. Awesome. Okay, Liam's first. So Aisha, if this is in your way a little bit, you can move it. I just want a good sound. It's my roommates. I was in a rush this morning. I was so remember that the people are on Zoom right here, so you can um, speak a little bit loudly for them and give them a good shot of whatever perspective you need to. Yeah, cool. Alrighty. So I made shoes. <laughs> Thanks. They're five, like five, five and a half inch tall platforms. Um, yeah, they make your whole world different when you wear them. Um, and pretty much my inspiration from this was, um, oh no, that's the right. Okay, well, don't throw things in a bag, guys. <laughs> um, I saw this artist's work in the beginning of the semester. <laughs> um, sorry? That's super cute. Oh. <laughs> um, their name was Ayo Ayeto, I think, and it was um, this headpiece that sat on the shoulders and it came out and it was like um, little circle papers and it was uh, floating around them as they walked. It was like in a circle around them and I was really captivated by that and so I thought about putting that into shoes um, and I wanted it to seem like you're being transported somewhere or either physically or emotionally. Um, so I call these head in the clouds. Um, and yeah. Have you worn them? Do they work a little bit? Or are they yeah. Better? Yeah, you can wear them around. Um, it just takes balance. Yeah. <laughs> um, my roommate was wearing them around and fell on them, but <laughs> they didn't break, so they're sturdy. Oh my gosh, if they break, that would have been a mess. Yeah, I mean, it's corrugated cardboard and um, the top half is a thrifted sole. So it's like some weird, really hard foam. Um, so they're like pretty sturdy and shoe glue is amazing. It's so strong. Yeah, I only had luck with it better than just the regular cement. Mm -hmm. Um, did this make you want to do more shoe design? Are you into it or are you sort of like done there and done up in there? Um, I am definitely intrigued to do something more functional that I could wear every day. I think that would be really cool. Um, I didn't really delve into that part of shoe design. Um, but I think, yeah, I'm interested in it. I don't know if it necessarily made me want to do it more because I already had an interest. Um, so I think it's about the same. I, I just had, a, I was intrigued by how shoes were made. Oh, okay. um, I'm interested in shoes. Yeah. Um, what about the process? Was there something in particular that um, you found along the way that was surprising about how difficult it was or just the process in general? Did you learn something specific? Um, yeah, so when I was making these, I had a different idea in the beginning of the materials I was going to use. I found this, or I didn't find it, I bought this silicone, um, and I thought it would be cool to cover 
the platform with this silicone and make it more textural. Um, I'm glad I didn't do that because this is already so textural, but I think, I think it'd be really cool to use that medium for something else. It was like giving some really cool um, bumps and some looks. Sort of. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like icky and so it was cool. Yeah, the bead work took me a really long time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely the chain was the most work. Um, took me for the chain alone, like a week to make and then the beading. I did them, the first chain I did in one sitting um, and it was 12 hours. And then the second beading, I split it up over like three days um, and that was more feasible. Thank you. Really good addition to your portfolio. Did you get some good pictures? I did, yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. Very cool. Yeah, that's all good now. Oh, yeah. You don't need to see my face, you can just see this. Um, okay, so this is my bag. She um, works like this, it gives these finger holes. Sorry, my finger has a band aid on it. So cool. But um, there's these holes in the back and then you slide your fingers into these um, sort of like glove-like finger, uh, I don't even know, tubes. Um, <laughs> they're just <laughs> molds, sorry. I know, and my brain really is not working right now. But um, so there, I made a plaster cast of my hand and then I wet molded vegetable tan leather around um, each of my own fingers. And then initially had the plan to dye it to match the color of the lambskin, but um, the dye wasn't, I wasn't able to get a close enough color. So I ended up then wrapping each vegetable tan finger um, in the lambskin and stitching them all together. But um, so my inspiration, it's very much about sort of like how you interact with your body and how um, it's supposed to be something kind of like sacred because it's sort of like your home, but then sort of the way that society puts a lot of pressure on different individuals to either conform to a certain way physically or just how they express themselves. It kind of creates a negative relationship with your body. And I've had a very negative relationship with my body. So my whole sort of senior thesis is exploring that relationship and trying to find ways that it could maybe be positive or just sort of exploring the negative um, and thinking about these interactions, sort of like touch and the impressions that that could leave. And if some, types of touch don't leave a physical impression, what would that look like if it did? If it's like fueled by anger or love or, you know, a positive emotion versus a negative emotion. And so this bag, all, this bag and then the other bags I'm hoping to make are very much about different interactions that I feel like I've had with my own body um, or sort of like imagined having with my own body. And so this one, I have a 3D printed frame so it has hinges and closes um, with a magnetic closure. And then I embroidered the lining with little ghost hands. Um, you cannot see that, but um, <laughs> just because it's about like, again, the touch and imprints and handprints and things like that. Um, so yeah, so I designed the file, the 3D file and then printed it with the engineering department and um, then stitched the leather. Well, I first adhered the leather to all of the different folds that I created um, in the 3D file and then stitched it as well. And it's supposed to be very like organic, very like melting and like squeezing and that kind of um, experience. Yeah, that, <clears throat> the detail that went into that is awesome. Like it's just, it's, it's a breathtaking piece and the conceptual 
part behind it's really uh, moving <clears throat> and relatable for a lot of people, not just women, but everybody. And that um, you can tell them inside, you did all that by a machine, like quick sketch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like so pretty much. This is like a the epitome of a student taking her education into her own hands. You did all the 3D printing research and learning and teaching yourself. Mm -hmm. And the creative problem solving and the critical thinking is very apparent here to figure out all of this. So you and I didn't have like a super long talk about anything in particular. You did this major or majorly on your on your own. Mm -hmm. So kudos. Very good job. Thank you. Um I think I'm like very well actually the other thing i forgot to say about sorry i'm really scatter brained right now but um the other thing about the bags and this i remember because miss brown brought it up they're not very like comfortable to use and that's intentional like it's sort of exploring my own discomfort with my body and forcing you to conform to the shape of the bag and how you interact with it and how you hold it so that's really left that up <laughs> yeah i can see that okay. yeah and um, as I was saying, I'm like a super intense, sometimes way too intense perfectionist. So I definitely have other like variations of this that I want to make edits to and then remake it. So I'd probably see at least one more sample coming out of this until it's like perfect and like ready for like a factory and manufacturing it. Mm -hmm. What was the most difficult part for you to manufacture yourself? Um, I would say the learning process of what forming the finger since it's such a tight like curve and then stitching that was challenging. But then last night I found out the most challenging part was when you don't print the holes that you like designed to stitch through big enough. So you have to like, I had to go through with a pin and it's about like 200 holes of plastic and my finger was bleeding because of doing it and push the pin through the plastic to get the hole big enough to put a needle through. Um, so that's one of the things I have to change is make the holes bigger so that I can more easily so on um, the leather to the plastic so that it still has a good like, bond but it doesn't it's not so painstakingly there's a lot they're really tiny i actually ended up skipping holes when i was stitching because they're i did them so close because it's hard because you're staring at a computer screen and it's all in millimeters and like my brain doesn't work in millimeters so like, i'm like oh that sounds about right and i have a ruler next to me and I'm trying to figure out measurements, but then you can't really tell until you see it like in person in front of you. Like for me, I'm a very visual person, so I have it like in my hands. So it's a learning back and forth for sure. Experimental process. Well, you did great work, Kylie. Very impressive. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, you guys, this is my bag. Oh my God, Levi, it's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, what up? Wait, what'd you say? I love you, continue. <laughs> Lots of love, thank you. Um, so I was looking at, I was trying to think of in coordination with the stuff that I'm trying to do as a senior collection, thinking of a kind of escapist, surrealist, uh, utopian society in my mind, because my last project that we did in the spring abroad was thinking about the, a dystopian future. So I kind of wanted to flip that, continue some of those designs, but think about them in a more light and cheerful way with how kind of down everything has been this year. So I was looking at work by Aronimus Bosch, I think is how you say it. His um, painting, The Garden of Earthly Delights was a really cool uh, source of inspiration. It had lots of flowery, cool, organic, um, both like organic and mechanical, like repeated geometric kind of forms. And was, I don't know, in, a, in the same way that I, brought that into here where there's like organic things happening, but it's also lots of symmetry. Um, and so I was just like playing with some of the shapes that were a part of his 
painting. And so I made the bag out of brass um, in the jewelry studio and then attached all these little pearls to the ends of the, of the leaf shapes. And the bag part is made out of this like laser cut leather. I think it's laser cut, I might be wrong, but it's got a cool like reptile-y texture on it that I thought was really fun. And I thought the blue and the brass together worked like a really good color combo. And so um, ideally I was gonna have a more sophisticated closure, but I had some problems in the jewelry studio with the torches and things just like blowing around and not working out so well. So I just did this little gathered closure inside, but she thought, cute, like enough room to fill, you know, to put a little lipstick, a little <laughs> mascara, your birth control, whatever you need. Uh, and then easy little drawstring closer you can tie it up and get to go. I don't know, I loved it. I had a really good time making it, honestly, and it, uh, pretty proud of it, I like it a lot. <laughs> To that, that solution to your problem. Yeah, thank you. So, would you say that the metal working is the hardest? Uh, yeah, trying, I think, getting the leaf shapes to the cuff, like, because it's such a big shape and you have to, like, keep the metal really hot when you're trying to solder uh, any shape, any kind of, like, metal together. You have to keep the whole piece, like, really hot. So, I had me and another girl in the jewelry studio just like had two like huge torches going both at the same time like trying to keep this all so that the, the solder would flow around this whole top part and uh that was probably the most it was not the most difficult i think putting the legs onto this was the most difficult because they just didn't want to touch like they're both like flat pieces they should have just touched and like been cool and soldered but for some reason the wire was just like nah did not want to touch it so the solder would just not flow it probably took me like eight times to try and get all the legs on but that was probably the most difficult part also i changed up my handle design because i originally was going to have it so that it was like a crossbody strap that was in the leather and um kind of like looking at the pictures i had drawn of it it didn't make as much i, I just didn't think it made my, very much sense for it to be a crossbody bag with all of this stuff happening on it. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So I thought a little handle, a little lantern bag made it a little more practical. Yeah, I don't think anybody in this class didn't change route a little bit with their design because it's all so experimental. And I don't know a lot of what you guys are doing. I know about bags and that's pretty much it, right? And uh, so me guiding you, is a little bit of a lost cause in some areas we have to do research together or you have to do it on your own and uh that is a good example of that mm -hmm. yeah you did a really really good job very impressed with that thank you did you get some good pictures um, I took one huge picture of it upstairs <laughs> on the roof this morning but I definitely need to get some better pictures yeah, of it for sure time to yeah I'm gonna take it to the I'm going to take it to the fab and take some pictures of it like with a white uh, infinity background or whatever. Um, do you feel like you want to work more with metal or does that sort of scare you off after that? No, I would love to keep working with metal. I don't think that I'm going to take another metal 
jewelry class though. I just don't know that I have the time for it next semester. It just like took a lot of time this semester. It would definitely like pulled me away from my fashion stuff. And so I pretty much only got like three garments done and I want to have like a lot more garments next semester to have like a fully realized like collection done. So, but I think I'm going to try and sneak myself in there and do some personal projects like outside of classwork. Okay. Yeah, right on. Thank you guys. <laughs>
is that you were doing so much work and you wanted to do it right. Um, so that, that speaks loudly to me. Um, but overall, it turned out well. And I understand that you want to get another one. Like, there, almost everybody in here didn't have samples, like full samples. If you're doing something more closely related to a garment, maybe, but um, you couldn't do a full sample. You could, you could mimic it the best you could, but these pretty much are the real samples. This is your first prototype. You're definitely going to have things that you're like, I wish I could do it this way, or I should have done it that way. Um, so, yeah, take that and go with it. If you want to work with some more uh, head wrap designs or head piece designs, you learned a lot probably from this semester then to do that. Yeah, and I think also, like, also just sewing the leather was very difficult because I, I had, like, just all these pleats and they were, like, very thick mm -hmm. to sew through. So, yeah, I think I would probably use, like, a lighter, like, leather than this or a thin leather than this, um, like, next time I do it. So. That's another thing. A lot of people in the class work with leather for, um, Maybe not the first time, but some of you the first time. And um, oh, the sewing of leather that proved to be very troublesome for a lot of people because our machines aren't necessarily equipped for that. We should have one walking foot machine in the department, and um, I've been talking about that. Not that you guys will see that you're gonna be gone, but. Yeah, know that you just selling the leather is a big task that you defeated. Um, but very good. You, you did a lot of, of problem solving with that for sure. Hi everyone, so I made like this best and bad instead. Um, pretty much the inspiration behind it, most of my designs are very space driven. More specifically, the inspiration behind this piece was the Mercury bodysuits, NASA's Mercury bodysuits. Um, they're like a uh, reflective silver like this, and I wanted it to be as functional as the spacesuits resembled, as well as um, almost being an accessory that could be added to the spacesuit. So I made it out of this tissue lame and backed it with this waterproof canvas, as well as lined it and added um, some pocket detailing, some canvas webbing, buckles, and some clear vinyl detailing on the side. Because I noticed in the Mercury bodysuits there was some clear vinyl details, and the straps are also adjustable. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, the inside's just lined with regular black vinyl. But yeah, I think the most difficult part was probably just maneuvering the clear vinyl around this curve here. I kind of had to baste it at first, and then iron it, and then sew it. Because I could not keep that curve under the machine at first. It looks great. From Thank here, you. I don't see any <laughs> issue with it. It looks perfectly fine. So, yeah. How did you make um, your pockets stand out? Um, honestly, I think it's just like the waterproof canvas I use. It's very like structural. Mm -hmm. So it took the folds very well, even when sewing it under the machine. Yeah. It just that piece of information is something that you're going to take to every other project you do. Mm -hmm. you know, how do I get structured pockets that stand out on your own? Yeah. I like that you use the waterproof canvas on the inside though for a function. Mm -hmm. know, even though it's itty bitty, you probably yeah. need something underneath it if you were to wear it as like a functional piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks super cool, very futuristic. It does tie into your aesthetic that you've been doing for a couple of years. Yeah. Like space forward and um, metallic, clear vinyl, pockets, utilitarian. Yeah, you did a good job. 
Thank you. Thank you. Basically, as what I wanted to have is like a versatile like decorative piece that would have added on as like a layering item, usually with like modest clothing. Um, a lot of the clothing that I make is either very like elongated, very focused on the waist, and then loose on every other area of aspect of the body. And what I wanted is something that would create like something that would add. Um, more detail or like a decorative thing around like the waist or like right below the bust. Um, and I feel the belt and what I wanted is I wanted to make it very versatile so you can use it as like a, you can like change the layout of how you wanted it so it could be this like on this side, it's adjustable the size or it could be a decorative skirt Thin, I guess in the way um, and then I just had the kind of beading um, designs to kind of accentuate the hip area or around my focus on just the side just to add like a little bit of detail on the top of the simple waist belt along with like the skirt as well and I just thought it would be a lot more clean cut and a modern take on like the decorative piece for modest clothing, like conservative clothing. So, um, how did the buckle turn out for you? Um, oh, yeah. it able to figure that out how problems out? Yes. So, what I did is I hand sewed it with a uh, closed over here, but I have this loop on top. Um, I folded it over and I had this little hole. Mm -hmm. I just made a hole for the this part of the buckle to open up a little bit. And yeah. On the other side, I just stitched it down and so yeah, um, just, just folded it over. Yeah, that looks good. And then my skirt piece on the back side is just attached simply as like an extension. That one looks nice, finished off like that. Yeah. And then the beading was like in sandwich in between. Um, the belt and the skirt. So it's glued, right? The, the, the leather binding? No, I stitched this part. I mean, well, it's half glued, half stitched. The fabric is stitched to yeah, it, but so glued to it. Normal sewing machine. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. huh? Weird, yeah. But it worked out. I didn't break my needle. <laughs> that's surprising. Yeah. Um, so what changed from your original design that you were going um, to? For the original design, I had more of the beading on top, uh, like scattered around. But what I realized is when I added more pieces, I removed a lot more pieces because of how it was sitting on the frame of the piece. It was sticking out and it was um, not sitting how I wanted it to sit. So instead, I just wanted to allow it to be just shown on like the sides, and just like a simpler layout. Um, yeah, I was like removing different pieces, and I tried to change the orientation of how I wanted it to be shown. Um, I switched it by like looping. I made these little circles, so then I looped it through the belt. I tried um, what is it called? Putting them in front. That, that just putting them behind just lets it sit a little bit and then curves out a little. So I want it to just be a little subtle underneath and then come out. Yeah, it's a fun piece. You could, yeah, you can see it being worn all the ways that you, that you showed us. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, no, I didn't tweet this one. I got it pre-tweeted. Uh, yeah, it's too complicated for me, so I, yeah, but I attempted. So yeah, this is adjustable. Was the weather surprising, or was that pretty on par? It wasn't that bad as I expected it to be. I had like tools and things, so when I was poking the holes in, I had like specific tools and hammer. Everything that I needed to like, I guess, make it look clean cut. Um, for any find out is leather working so, or you plan to work with leather in the future? If you're making a belt and you have that that heel bar that has the regular tongue in the middle, yeah. you have to have a full long oval for that tongue to go through instead of just a little hole. Oh, okay. So when, when the tongue goes through, it has this little movement like this. So it's like wider? Long, long, like this through the, yeah. Oh. Uh, the center, the oblong is centered around the space where the tongue goes through. But this allows for more movement of that tongue through the tongue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, yeah, I um, had some trouble with the zipper, so I had to take that out, and I'm going to um, redo it and keep messing with it till I get it right. But I have... Oh, one second. The zipper um, looks like this. Oh my god, my socks. And I have like the little um, zipper pulls on it, so I just need to mess with that and attach that. But other than that, um, yeah, this is my bag. So. Yeah, it looks great, Daryl. You did such a good job on that. Um, need to pin your video. Yeah, the um, zipper, those are tricky, man. The top part of a bag, getting those into um, into the top load, it's, it's so unexpectedly hard. When you get to that certain yes. point, everything seems easy and then it starts to get real, real fast. Yeah. Um, but it's good that you are so interested and um, like satisfied with it that you wanna keep on going with it. That's super important that you wanna better it and, and follow through. Thank you. Yeah, I um like everything, well, everything was not going fine, but um, I kept messing up like with the binding cause I was using that rubber cement um, to help it stay in place. But once I used the tape and stuff, it um it was like really sticking for me but I had to redo it like a bunch of times and I wasn't expecting that and then I thought I was good and I get to the zipper and the zipper wasn't working so I'm just gonna keep trying and hopefully the zipper you know will look good on it but yeah well now you'll be able to sort of take your time and really um we can thoroughly talk out your options, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it was a pretty big um, design for you to take on, you know? Making a bag is not simple. And it's yes. not easy. Yes. Um, what was the hardest for you? Did you, uh, putting on the binding or maybe the zipper is the hardest? Um, yeah, definitely the zipper and the binding because um, like the edges of the binding, I need to fix that a little bit too. I couldn't really make it continuous. So like right here, um, I need to go back and try to work that some more, but yeah, the binding was pretty difficult. I see. Yeah. Well, but, for, uh, for the time that you had, it looks great, Daryl. Thank you. Just like everybody else, you got uh, your own special little specific lessons that came to you from that design so yep you know that you need a little more time than you think when making a bag yes well very good daryl thanks for talking thank you all right brianna you ready yeah i'm gonna share my screen uh, it says I'm disabled from sharing my screen. Let me stop that real quick. Oops. All right, should be good now. Okay. Okay. So, um, this is my final. So, I made shoes. The semester and I was inspired by so like pretty much all my projects this semester was inspired by um, botanical um, flowers and just like the history of flowers and just the variety of um, different uses that you can do with flowers um, how you can use it for medicine how it can be used for natural dye um, later some of you that are in Guthrie's class you'll see that I dyed all of my fabric um, with goldenrod and basically all these projects um, just kind of tie together. So with this 
project for a kids class, um, I was I wanted to call my piece the verbena, which was kind of inspired by my mom's name. Um, we have a joke inside my family. Her name is Verbian, and we always joke that if she was a flower, she would be the verbena flower because it's the closest flower spelled to the um, the actual spelling of her name. So my shoes are pretty much complete. I just need this is not the right photo. I just need to attach the heel, but um, I'm waiting to do the straps last. They're all sewn up, but I'm waiting till the end to do that because I'm gonna actually put my foot in just to make sure that I place the straps in the right um, position. It's kind of hard to do it on the shoe form just because it doesn't really have much of an ankle and I would just prefer to use my natural ankle just to kind of gauge where the right placement um, for that to take place at. Um, but you can't see it in the picture, but the insole basically looks like this. So I made a little cutout in my little insole and I did like a scalloped edge and I embroidered the name of my piece, um, which is Verbena and yeah, like this whole project, I pretty much explored different materials. I wanted to, I wanted to use um, materials in a new way. So like my shoes have a cork filling on the inside, um, which that is covering the cellulose board and the, um, the shank board. Um, and the cool thing about cork is that it absorbs, it's really good at absorbing um, moisture. And um, I just thought that, and it also adds, um, I guess, to comfort. And for me being someone who's flat footed, I really wanted to design a heel that really catered to my foot. Um, I'm really not supposed to be wearing heels so much because it's not really good for my ankles, but um, one thing I always look for in shoes is that extra arch support. So my shoes have, I put in there, it's basically memory foam, but for your feet. And, um, I can't remember the exact technical name for it, but, um, with some researching, I like bought that and I put that underneath my, um, this insole that I created here, um, for my shoes. So my, when I finally attach the heel portion, I do plan to go out and take some photos in my shoes. Um, but yeah, this is my piece. Um, I'm pretty happy to where I got it at. It was hard. I feel like my, like not my ankles, my wrists are like really sore from all the hammering and all the gluing. So I'm just, I'm really happy to where I got it to because like in the beginning when we, when this is just an idea phase, I was, I was kind of, part of me was kind of scared that I wouldn't be able to do it just because I've never made shoes before. And it was kind of like a big leap for me just to take this um, risk. Um, but I felt like my research kind of helped me um, go forward with um, my idea for the semester just because I had so much of it. So I was just like, why not? So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, very well done, Brianna. You in the class did the most independent study and research for this, and it really showed. You started in the summer, remember getting all of your information together and ordering your lasts. Mm -hmm. um, and you're totally right. It's a big risk going into this huge, um, specific, very uh, technical knowledge based skill, you know, and you pretty much knocked it out of the park. So um, very well done. You did a lot of work and it's coming together, you know, even if you didn't make this due date year, you still got so much work done um, and they look fabulous. When do you plan on getting the um, heel applied to it? Um, I'm going to check the shoes later today to see if they're dry, like stiff enough before I um, attach them because I don't want to put it in and it's still like drying. I just want to make sure that the glue is like set properly. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll probably wait to the same time that I put it in last night, which I glued everything around like, I think it was 10 o'clock. So like 10 o'clock tonight, I'll probably check it. And then if it's ready, I'll do it. 
So. Yeah, you really impressed me with your personal uh, volition with this. So um, really good job. What about your process? What was like, what was the main thing that was like, holy crap, I did not see that coming. Um, I think the amount of detail that goes into shoemaking. Um, I definitely don't think heels are the hardest shoes to make. I feel like sneakers would be like the hardest just because making the foam for the bottom of sneakers is a completely different monster um, compared to um, other shoes that don't require that um, type of soling for the bottom. Um, I think my favorite part of this process was sourcing the materials. Um, I feel like I've kind of become like a material fanatic <laughs> during my time in um, VCU fashion. And I really like it. Like I, I love collecting things. And at this point I have so much of stuff, but I mean, I don't really mind because I, I can create something else with that later down the road. So um, for me, like this was a huge like investment, but I definitely um, think it was worth it because I have leftovers. I can use it to make other shoes, um, but yeah. Yeah, definitely. And you're gonna get more and more material. All of you guys are just gonna keep on collecting the fun stuff. That's just what we do. You're totally right. You're able to use it for other projects. Are you gonna make more shoes? Did this sort of like whet your appetite or are you a little bit exhausted from it? Um, I think I'm gonna, well, this, I feel like slingbacks as far as sling because this is this would be considered like a slingback um mm -hmm. with the toe heel i think the next type of shoe i'm gonna try to make would be a boot um i don't know how tall yet i'm probably gonna purchase the um like the leg portion because i the same place i ordered my last four they have like a matching like a you can order basically order a wooden thigh and build like to basically and they shape it to your actual thigh so you'd have to send your measurements and they make it for you so um yeah, I'll like probably, yeah. all the way up mm -hmm. that's crazy so and it just, it just attaches right on top of the last that i already have so i'll have a talk then leanne saying Oh, uh, Leanne wants to see your shoes again. Brianna, can you click on that? Oh, picture? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it might be easier to see on this too if you look close up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't zoom out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hold on. Small glass beads. You've got sequins. Are yeah. they the shape of flowers? I can't see the details. So yeah, so I used, so the, I cut, I had a lot of leftover like scraps from my, um, um, the, cause the lining of the shoe is made out of a lambskin, like burgundy. It looks like brown, but I feel like sometimes I look at it, it looks purple. I call it like a purple brown color, but Basically, I just took the little um, small little pieces and took the rabbit in the studio, cut it into a circle, and then I went in and did four little um, triangles in and made it, turn it into flowers. And then I punched a hole with um, my awl and sewed it onto my shoes. So, yeah. Um, I did. I did not take a photo of my heel. I will, I can, um, hold on, let me, I can upload a picture of the cast that I did. Shana helped me with the cast because Shana is a beast and she's awesome. <laughs> um, Facts. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one second, I'm about to add it to my folder now. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's kind of what the, um, this was my first cast that I did and this was out of brass. Um, the heel won't be this tall. I'm probably gonna, I need to, um, the other ones would be cut down at that. You see where that like 
part where it clearly it looks like there was there was a uh, brass cast onto another portion of uh, melted brass. So that part I would cut down and that would be the actual height of my um, heel that I would need for my shoe because this um, heel I ordered from this lady in California who sold heel molds and it was just easier for me to do it that way than just make it from scratch because I didn't really know too much about mold making um, with like um, I guess plastic and silicone and stuff like that. So I was just like, I'm just going to do this because it's already made and I can easily sand it and um, shave it down to the shape that I want it to be. But yeah. So yeah. Uh, impressive, Brianna. Very impressive. We are I also have a box that the shoes go in. So that's what this is. I just. Oh yeah. The little box that you made. Yeah. Very cute. Go next. That extra mile, you went there and it shows. Thank you. I could go next, Kate. Okay, so now, good job, Brianna. All right, is that Shayna or Chanel talking? Chanel. All right, we are ready for you. Okay. Um, give me one second. Okay. Um, okay, so this is my my bag um i was inspired by um the 90s basically i in the 90s they used to wear a lot of like windbreakers that were color blocked and so that's where i got my idea from um this is a men's bag it's not a woman's bag um i basically when i was doing my research i wanted to I found out that like the oldest bags were worn by men. They were coin bags and coin bags are usually round. So that's how I decided on the shape. And I still wanted it to be like um, kind of modern. So that's why I did the, the 90s just because I really do love the 90s and the kind of color schemes that they had back then. And so um, the fabric that I use, this is nylon ripstop. And they're all different weights. So that was pretty difficult working with all different types of weight because some of it was lightweight, some of it was like just heavier weight. Um, but overall, I feel like I enjoyed doing the project. Um, the fabric, working with this kind of fabric was really hard. Like it's so slippery. So I had to use hella pins for everything. And I would stab myself a whole bunch of times with my fingers. And um, yeah. That's so it. your uh, zippers look great. And uh, I see you got the cording in. Yeah, I actually, I figured out how to do the cording. Um, Good. It was a little difficult, but I'm glad that I decided to do it because it definitely did help. Um, kind of sharpen the shape of the bag yeah for sure and I can show y'all like what it looks like in person if y'all want to see what do you mean you're not here I know I'm saying like <laughs> on the camera oh I got you okay okay so this is what the bag looks like yeah, it's very cute. A lot of pop colors. And the chain um, is acrylic. It's like frosted acrylic chains. And there's a zipper in the back for like cards and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, there's paper in the inside so y'all can see the shape of the bag. But yeah, this is basically it. I really like the um, little peekaboo zipper in the back, the little zippered pocket. 
Um, yeah. The color on the blue is really pleasing. Um, what about the proportion of your bag? Would Are you in love with all the proportions? Would you change anything at all if you could? What about the hardware? Yeah. No, only thing was when I first started making the bag, I didn't look at my sketch. So the colors are a little out of place. This part, the blue part you see here was supposed to be this color and vice versa. So basically these two colors were supposed to be swapped out. So that part kind of bummed me out, but I had already did this, the, um, the pocket for it. So I was like, I'll just have to suck it up and make the rest of the bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just for time's sake. And yeah, other than that, I, I like it. Yeah, you did a great job. Um, and especially for not or doing all your work at home, you know, it's not an easy thing to do remote meetings and get the information you need. Yeah. Um, the one thing I can see is that those little tabs that are holding on your lobster clasps are um, outside. Did you forget to put those in the seam? I did, and then I tried to undo it. Like, I took out the seam and tried to sew it in the inside, and it started unraveling because I had already cut the seam allowance down. And so I tried to, like, top stitch it to keep it from, like, fraying because it looked fine at first like this it looked fine when I first sewed it in there but it started to fray because of the the weight of the the clamp so it started to fray like a lot more than I well I didn't even expect it to fray at all to be honest and um yeah so I just tried to top stitch it to keep it from fraying a little bit so that was probably the only part and I kind of wish that I would have just sewed it on this part instead of trying to put it back in the seam right here. But other than that, yeah. That's my Yeah, it looks great. Good job on the color blocking. Um yeah, that's that was good. You figured out the cording issue, so I'm glad that that, that um happened because it definitely yeah. makes a difference. All right, very good, Chanel. Thank you. Okay, so who do we have? Are you going to ask, Kate? Is that Rachel? Yeah. All right, we're ready for you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. um, I'll share my screen. Uh-huh. Um, so this is my hat, and I was inspired the, from the um, taboo of ear piercing. So the shape you see my design are taken from part of the ear, um, such as the, the round shape of the back extension, which just looks like the ear lobe. And the brims, uh, brims curve at front are like um, the bones on our ears. Um, I had combined the concept of earring. Um, yeah, I made these uh, hats accessory by using stainless leather. Uh, as you see, it can be hanging on the side, which is uh, imitating the function of earring and also providing a way to wear it without piercing the ears. Um, I think by making this hat, I uh, I had the first attempt on leather making and also working with the stainless leather. So I did some um, leather pin on it. The white dots are represent the acupoint on the ear. That is an idea on um, idea in the traditional Chinese medicine. So that's why some people believe that piercing impacts our body. Um, I think the most challenging part of the this whole process was sewing the clear vinyl because this requires the perfect pattern and also labeled notches. Everything has to match perfectly because the, the clear vinyl will leaving um, sewing marks 
if you remove the thread, so it's really hard to modify it. Um, yeah, that's, I think yeah, that's it. Looks, it looks great. This is, uh, for me, this is the most like obscure abstract concept, which I love about it. Um, it looks, it, it's like you, you wanna know more about it. So it's very compelling, Rachel. Thank but you. The construction um, looks good. It seems like the vinyl, I know it's very hard to work with, um, but it looks like you did well with it. From what I can see, and you have a lot of um, like specialty design elements here, like this little peekaboo window, almost like Alanta's vest right here. Yeah. And the new materials, the stingray leather that you were working with. Mm -hmm. um, have you put it on? Do you wear it? Have you put it on a person? Uh, yeah, I've tried it on. Does it fit good? Would you change anything about it? Um, uh, it's a little big for me, but this fits well, I think. Yeah. All right. Well, it's very, very good. Um, I would like to see it on a, on a human. If you get the chance to get a photo, it doesn't have to be like perfect portfolio style, but if you get a chance to do a, um, picture on actual body. Mm -hmm. Um, a very good work, Rachel. Thank very you. Impressed. Okay, so we have Cancini and Shayna. I don't mind going. Um, Shayna. All right. Where are we at? Um, all right, these are my shoes. I called them the tree shoes because my inspiration was my um, like own health problems and realizations and wanting to be more grounded to the floor, but not really having that access within the shoes that I wear designed by other people. And I was just learning about foot health and how it impacts your whole body and the honestly like cyclical nature of your body and how every element of it will impact the rest of it and then your mind and how we're honestly like trees so I call them tree shoes because it has to do with grounding and rooting and the colors and the wood and the materials they're pretty much just like cowboy boots they're not wearable so that's why they are not photographed with the feet on inside them but yeah it's just two wet formed leather I wet formed around a resin cast of my foot that I made so that um, I can get the undulations of the toes. Um, you can kind of see in the last photo, but like the undulation of the toes, um, which was part of my concept because your toes are actually supposed to be spread way more than our shoes allow your toes to be. And that allows you to have more contact with the floor and better center of gravity and then just better overall health, especially with your spine. So I really wanted, instead of like how most shoes sort of just solidify a toe shape that is artificial, um, emphasizing the regular form of the foot and giving it aesthetic purpose that it already has, but we have deemed un unattractive for shoes. So yeah, that's why the sole also the wooden sole you can kind of see has like the undulation repeating um, that mimics the leather. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I love the concept or the, um, the incentive to want a shoe that is healthier for you. Um, so you have these big wooden blocks, right? That, mm -hmm. um, that gives me a little bit of pause on of like how your foot is going to be feeling on the wooden blocks. Um, but the idea is cool and it looks cool, the different layers of wood. Mm -hmm. um, what about the shaping? I know you're talking about when you're stitching up the seams of the shaft that the shape around the ankle and stuff was getting 
to Wolke or um, Lane in a way that you weren't exactly happy with, what would you do to change that if you were going to make another one? I mean, it worked out pretty well for me. I glued down the seam. Uh, I think if I were just the order of operations, um, making the last two, because my last was to my foot size, so I couldn't necessarily use it all in one um, because it was so close to my foot size and your last is usually like a little bigger to give room for ease. So I had to wet form the pieces um, with before I attach them. And usually you wet form everything at once when it's all attached. So just order of operation, also timing and like just my process doesn't really work well by doing four things at a time. I'm a very like, I'm gonna do this one thing really well and focus on it. So if this was my only project, it would be much better. Was it hard to sort of rely on a friend to do part of this? Like he, the guy- Only husband. because of the deadlines. If me and him were just in the real world as we are now, um, I think it would have just been more fluid and more of a collaboration but because I had these deadlines yeah. it was very much just like get it done right um do you feel like you learned from him though when you guys did that process together that you were you took some information from watching him or talking with him mm -hmm. for sure that's good that's where those collabs will come in hand mm. um all right very good Shayna cool All right, Cancini, are you there? Yeah. All right, I'm, are you ready? Yeah, I'm gonna share my screen. All right. So these are the boots that I upcycled and my inspiration is from Elsa Scaparelli's circus collection. And one of her accessories that she designed were these long gloves that were pink and they had long ruffles running down them. And that's when I was inspired by them. So I designed these boots and one of the most fulfilling aspects of making them is learning how to quilt because I've never done them before and I got to do that. And the most difficult part was cleaning the boots because pleather and glue, it was just a lot of mess. But yeah, I like how it came out. Yeah, I get a very strong surrealist, like whimsical feel from this. So that was very successful. You did well. Um, what about attaching the actual materials to the boot? How did you get in there? Just by hand stitching? Yeah, it was all hand stitch. Oh my goodness. So that took you a long time, huh? Yeah, my fingers hurt. So I had to buy a thimble. Yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. So useful. Have you put them on or did your mom see them? They're her boots, right? Yeah. Luckily it's like my size as well. So I can wear them. Would she ever wear something so um, flamboyant? Yeah, she would. <laughs> that's awesome. She's very supportive of my design. <laughs> Aw, that's good. Well, they look great, super fun. And the execution looks great too. That's not a easy thing. It's very frustrating trying to get into those small spots with hand stitching. Yeah, especially like the corners, the small crevices. Mm hmm Yeah. Awesome. Well, good job, Cancini. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Is that everybody? Wait, do we have Yasmin? No, we still have me. Is that Yasmin talking? Yeah, it is. Why don't I see your um 
bubble. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yep, I got right. you. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, let me know if this works because I'm working off of my phone. Okay, so I'm in my portfolio bag and most of it was just catered to working on my surface design, um, which I'm so tired of saying because I feel like I've said it at least three times a day now. Um, but yeah, it was just a bunch of play on puncturing the leather, figuring out different materials I wanted to put on it and enough for it to seem kind of full, but also um, have enough like negative space also. So there are little holes in certain areas to kind of create a flow of motion. And then um, two different ways I tried to kind of, I, I like to say carpet this leather. And then I used another um, leather material that's way more lightweight and easier to work with um, to create a contrast in color, which I, want to say like got a year ago so yeah I was very I was very happy to finally be able to use it and then these handles are just wooden circles that I had to kind of stain for it to match the contrast leather so yeah and then um this is the back side and then this is like a focus in on a little bit of what that looked like and I think that's it yeah, I think that's all I uploaded. Yeah. So there that's about the, it. You got the front done, but the back is sort of a plain style. Um, yeah, I was thinking about putting a triangle across the middle of it um, with the contrast leather. But once I tried that, I didn't like it as much. So I was more settled on leaving it as a plain surface. And if I wanted to change that in the future, I could. But this is what I was most comfortable with now. Um, so what about the um, shape and the structure of the bag? What happened to the idea of the box corners or some sort of volume that gives you a depth or width? I tried to do that, but when I picked the bag up, it created like a weird like the top of the bag did not have enough structure to maintain a like square box it was kind of like pulling the rest of the weight and then awkwardly hanging if that makes any sense I don't know how to describe oh. that I basically undid those stitches because this worked better and also like if this is a portfolio bag it keeps everything flat on the inside versus the um dimensional piece was like not only not functional at the end, but also um, I guess wouldn't work with pieces that need to stay flat. Okay. Um, and so the top load of it, is it fully open that entire top? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have little snaps in place. Are you completely finished with the um, surface design that you were working on? Mm-hmm. And I can't remember the, was there a concept behind that or was it just a purely aesthetic, you were going with your gut type of detailing? Um, I was just going with an aesthetic so that I could match the rest of what I'm putting inside like work-wise. All right. Okay. I would like to see this in person. Well, with every all of them. So I'm looking at the um, the holes, like the little perforations. That part's interesting to me. It almost looks like an addition rather than holes, but it's probably just the picture. That was actually the first part. It probably took me the longest. And honestly, I feel like after this project, I can definitely say uh, blood, sweat, and tears have gone into this. I did not expect to get poked so much. Yeah, definitely leather will make that happen. Did you poke it with an awl or by machine or what did you get those holes with? 
Um, I did both. So I started out with the machine to make sure that it was spread apart evenly. And then um, I realized that they weren't big enough for it to appear like as a surface design. So I went back with an awl and individually each like poked one. So, yeah. Gotcha. Well, I, um, I can see the time that went into doing that. So well done on that. Thank you. All right. Great job, Yasmin. All right, that's 13 people. Um, we, I'm sure, have a few that are not going to turn in today. So that was really great, you guys. I'm so impressed and proud of you guys for making all that happen with everything else that's going on, all your other classes. It's impressive that you you can juggle all this and actually get things done. And as well, when um, your design changed a little bit, or if um, you know you didn't finish all the way, this that is not a um, that is not anything to feel weird about. That just happens. If you have extra time, that's just luxury. In the real world, it, it'll you'll have both of those things where you have a bunch of time to make corrections and times when there are no flexible due dates. Um, but I really loved having you guys in class this semester. I'm sorry it was so strange that we had a lot of remote learning and people scared about the sickness. And um, this is your senior year. So it's sort of really developmental and, and special. I hope that you learned a little bit from your own process in this. And I know that you noticed my style of teaching is not very rigid. It's like, let you guys go. It's a senior class. This is your time to find your own way of dealing with stuff, time management, how fast you personally work, you know, uh, and the critical thinking, the, the problem solving, the creative problem solving is huge. So that exercise is very important, which I hope you guys got this semester. Um, so to recap, the 28th is when spec sheets are due. That should have one tech flat in it. Um, should be the front. If you're only doing one, should be the most important perspective of it with uh, POMs. Spec sheet should also have a BOM, your bill of materials. I want to see um, a list of the materials included in your whatever design you have. So that's the spec sheet. And then the illustration should be close to, it should be exactly the, the final product. Nothing before um, when you had a different style or a different design completely. So it needs to reflect your final piece. Uh, and obviously with color and annotations. And then lastly, so we've got our shared Google folder. Um, did everybody see that email at some point? So if you want to, which if I don't get a lot of people, then I'm, I don't think I will do it. But if there's enough of you that want to have this work sort of put into an edited video, then I'll just pop in all of your video into that, the interview of yourself being, you know, answering the questions, landscape. And um, I think that's it, you guys. Uh, if you haven't uploaded your photos already, and if you have already uploaded, um, think about what you took shots of. I really want to see details. Think about it from my perspective. Um, what do I want to see up close to grade? Okay. And a lot of it is your entire process and your um, sort of involvement throughout the semester, but a lot of it hinges on your actual product. So I want to see close detailed shots in addition to big full design shots, okay? 
All right, does anybody have any questions? Or you're like, just let me out of here. Everybody's good. Okay. All right, you guys, email if any questions, okay? I'll Thank see you. Kate. Kate. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure.